Hey, Internet friends, Magic Brad here with Synergy Cafe, the Synergy Collaborative and Synergy Lifestyle Academy. And I've got some new friends online. This is actually the first one I've ever done with more people than me. I mean, more people than me and a guest. The first one I've got is my co-host. Her name is M.A. How you doing, M.A.? Good. Doing hey. great. M.A., if you don't know, she does this thing, Scenes from the Hat. If you remember that, uh, Whose Line Is Anyways, and she does that on a regular basis. And it's always fun and improvisational. And then we've got mm -hmm. Sam. Sam, I am. Sam, you there? Hi. Yep, I'm Ooh. here. Is it Hi. really Samantha? Uh, yes, only when I'm in trouble or you need to get my attention. <laughs> oh, Samantha, pick up your room. Fred, that's <laughs> nailed it. Yep. We'll go with Sam, three letter word. I like that. Four letter word, Perfect. M A, there's two letters. And that's more syllables, too, just because of that. Can't call you Ma. <laughs> ah, no, thank you. <laughs> hard pass, hard pass, hard pass. So, M.A., how did you and Sam meet? Um, well, uh, I was looking on uh, some boards and um, some casting boards and saw an ad for a co-host. No, oh, how did you and Sam meet? Not me and you. Oh, how did me and Sam meet? That's Sorry. How, that's how we met. <laughs> I already know how we met. <laughs> See, seeds from a hat. We, seeds from we, a hat, actually. Yeah. Oh, um, cool. Yeah, uh, we we were both players. Um, um, nope. Sam's not quite as involved anymore, but uh, have grown into my own projects and yep. kind of branching out like uh, like Ma is doing. So that's exciting. You got to, you know, there's a fine line between like focused and um, diversifying your portfolio. Right. I think it's yeah, right. safer to have a lot of different tools in your belt, in my opinion. That is true. I couldn't agree more. Especially in these days and times with this whole virusy thing going on. I think a lot of people got into this, uh, this is what I do for a living. And then all of a sudden, er, guess what? You're not doing that anymore. <laughs> right. And yep. that can cause anxiety and stress and I know for me, because my background's in the event industry, I, I produce a trade show for people in the event industry, and we promote Sweet. speakers and entertainers and caterers and all that stuff in the events world. And I was trying to focus on events, tourism, trust, uh, hospitality, and travel. Guess what? Stops, <laughs> just like that. Yeah, so and, uh, like, Brad, like you and I have discussed, I, I have a... a big background in the hospitality and event planning industry myself with, um, I have a hospitality and tourism management degree. And uh, I also worked in restaurants for 14 years and uh, for probably another 14, 15 years as an executive assistant, which also involves event planning. So um, I am well familiar with those, those types of worlds, so. And how they stopped all of a sudden. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And they are getting creative. It's, it's interesting watching how people have, uh, I've got some magician friends because my background is magical entertainment. That's what got me in the event business. And these guys are actually, one guy started a thing, he's calling it Turf and Tar, where he does a Turf and Tar magic show. He'll come out to your house and stand on your lawn or in your driveway and do a magic show for you. He gets paid <laughs> nice. by PayPal. You just got to get creative like that. And I got another friend that does Elvis impersonations and his market is usually like the, uh, the old folks homes, the retirement uh, condos mm -hmm. and stuff. And he can't go there now. So he does the show in his living room and he's got his cameras and lights and everything. He does uh, Elvis and Garth Brooks and uh, Frank Sinatra and the oldies like that. And then they project it on a big screen, you know, via, Facebook Live. So he's Great. still working, but it's just not the same. But it's, it's cool. Bring it up because I talked to MA before we even started this. And one of the things I said was people are going to have to get innovative. Yep. Um, she said that we might bring up how to get speaking events. Reach mm -hmm. out to everybody and anybody you know. I think it's brilliant. This is called Synergy to begin with because half of what I do is I spend half my day reaching out to college campuses, reaching out to people I've met and go, hey, I can do this online. I can do this in some alternative way, but I can still get the info out. I can still get the, the statistics, the 
um, helpline, the warm line, I can get all of that out. And it's getting innovative. That's exactly what it is. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And that kind of segues into what you speak about is the lower stress and anxiety. If a person is rigid and said, this is the way I've got to do it. And all of a sudden they can't, that's going to mm -hmm. bring up that stress. But if all of a sudden you can express yourself in a different way, it just happens to be Zoom, it'll kind right, of reduce right. that stress a little bit. Right. And the thing, about, the thing about anxiety and stress right now is, so my background, I work for Mental Health Minnesota. I'm the event coordinator, um, the outreach coordinator as well. And um, what we've seen is 20% plus increase in anxiety screenings since this started and it's really hard to cope with so we actually did a powerpoint on how to build resiliency because that's the huge that's the big part that a lot of people are missing is how do you deal with stress and drops trauma and how do you build those tools and so i do have some what i call back pocket tools that i'll share with you guys as well do you, do you think that it's um like the resiliency, but also the flexibility, kind of like the willow and the windstorm where it can kind of right. go with the flow? Absolutely. That's without a doubt. It's one of those things where to build flexibility, you have to let go of that rigidness. A lot of people are set in their ways. And so you have to take a step back and be like, hey, maybe there's a new way to do this. Maybe I can find somehow to do it differently. But you kind of have to let go of that anxiety before you can even get to that point. Well, it's kind of like how I do these interviews. I, I don't like to can them with the specific questions and then have them answer the questions because that's too digital for me. I like to see how it's going to flow. And I'm assuming that's similar too with MA with you with the scenes from the hat kind of thing. You don't know what's coming. So you got to be good at improv and kind of go with whatever works, right? Yeah, and that, that's, that's exactly what the structure of the show is. is it's, it's all comedy improv, if you've seen Whose Line Is It Anyway. We're playing um, almost the exact same games, um, but we're a, a bit limited in the games that we can play because of the format. Um, but yeah, we, we don't know what's coming. We don't know what the suggestion that we're going to get is, uh, even in this format. Um, we do have a host and um, he and the producer are coming up with all of our suggestions and the players absolutely do not know what we're getting until we actually get it on the show live as we're streaming. Exactly. So, and the, the fun part too is when all of a sudden they start screwing up and it ends up being part of the routine. That's one of the funnest things. You start being a, a part of it. You start feeling, yeah. oh my God, they screwed up and they, I feel so sorry <laughs> for them. You start getting empathetic and... Well, I like the fact that you guys brought up uh, screwing up and laughing about it. Um, that's one of the best ways to relieve some anxiety is having yeah. a little humor and having a little laugh. Um, laughing releases hormones in your body that reduce anxiety and stress and really helps you kind of take that step back and go, wait a second, what was I just thinking for a moment? And you're like, holy crap, that one little minute of laughter completely somehow just helped me to be a little less stressed out. Do you, so. Sam, do you do like a one-on-one -on -one coaching or consulting or do you speak from the stage? How do you go about working with um, people you work with? I haven't moved into consulting yet, although it was suggested to me by a few people. I haven't done it yet. Someone said I should become a life coach. I got a good <laughs> chuckle out of that. Um, most of it's on stage. So for example, I'm supposed to be speaking in September in Washington, DC, um, at a national conference. So we'll see if that happens. So, I hope so. Yeah. Yeah. Going. We're, we're, well, we're hoping. So. Well, Sam, Sam, to be fair, you have done some one-on-one -on -one coaching with your friends. Valid point. <laughs> so I should start charging for this. This is, this is where that's going. Noted. Noted. You can at least buy coffee or a dinner. <laughs> I, I have gotten coffee out of it and I'm imagining that that's a pretty decent price right there so yes. that's right coffee is expensive these days <laughs> yes it is or did well, you have so to just get that uh, that mixed stuff did you get to go to like one of those fancy barista starbucks places always that's <laughs> always my go-to every time well it was my go-to now it's my nespresso machine <laughs> I know we live in a different world here. 
it, the it, stress thing, it, it does make you stressed. I mean, I kind of don't get very stressed. I don't take, like, like they, they say, don't sweat the small stuff because it's all small stuff. Everything really is. Right. I mean, if a person is uh, a believer in heaven and they're going to die, when they die, they're going to heaven. That's good. So it's not that big a deal. If you don't believe in heaven, you're going to rot and nobody will know and it doesn't matter anyway, right? <laughs> oh, good. <Valid> point. <laughs> Enjoy the moment. Well, you, say. you wouldn't believe that anxiety that people are holding, how much it holds you back. Um, it plays such a huge effect on your cognitive and emotional skills that having that anxiety and that stress, especially when it's so built up like it is nowadays, it actually is making us less creative. And it's actually putting us in this place where we're not um, getting that chance to actually think outside the box because right. you go into that box as a defense mechanism and I, you sit there. I was so. just thinking that, thinking like we are literally in a box right now. We're in a, in a house and that's kind of where we're, we're stuck inside the box. I have to get out on the deck once in a while, you know? <laughs> oh, so right. so what, what would you suggest to break out of that? I think some there's some breathing techniques my favorite is square breathing you breathe in for four seconds you hold it you breathe out for four seconds and then you let it out for four seconds and you do that it's been proven that breathing simple breathing techniques can lower your stress and your anxiety and it can get your heart rate down um mm -hmm. doing something called a tip temperature is huge on your body if you can lower your temperature when you're really panicking or you're really dissociating or zoning out get some ice cubes or an orange and just hold it and get that body temperature down or shock your body with cold water to the face um getting outside and exercising you mentioned riding mentioned riding a bike um i don't take being indoors all the time very well so i started jogging in march and get yourself out there it can be a walk it could be stretching it could be really simple things just moving your joints and getting some sunshine. In Minnesota, we're notorious for having vitamin D deficiencies. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And the thing is, vitamin D plays a huge role in all those good hormones. So get outside. When it's nice like this, try to be outside. I should be doing this interview outside, but I'm <laughs> mostly so my phone doesn't die, which it's slowly life dying. Life. Yeah. Life yep. Life. So I think that's important yeah. to have someone like yourself that understands this stuff because people get inside that box and they really don't know how to get out, get out because it's kind of like the right. goldfish in the goldfish bowl. They don't know they're in the goldfish bowl. So if you can say, hey, guess right. what? There's another possibility to get outside of that. And it takes someone like yourself from the outside to say, hey, there is a door right there. Oh, really? Well. It's funny because I'm not even on the outside. I have an anxiety disorder. I have a really bad anxiety disorder and it's a social anxiety disorder of all things. And so it's not just something that like, look, there's a door. It's I had to find that door and I had to walk out of it myself. So it's not an easy trip to take. And once you start taking the steps, it's worth it, but it's, it's hard. It's some hard. I suppose, and then you get on the things. stage with all those people staring at you. <laughs> I'm actually used to all the people staring at me. I'm pretty, that's actually, that doesn't bug me. It's being in the crowd that actually, uh, the lack of space and the lack of breathing room is a little more frustrating. Oh, there you go. I get that. Yep. I'm sort of an introvert yep. extrovert. I can be on the stage and do my thing, but I don't really want to hang around the people. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's exactly right. So with your, um, with your business and things, do you, like you'd mentioned colleges, is there other specific niches? Cause you do have to kind of put stuff out there, but if you put stuff out there and say, I just want to speak in front of people, you need to find out who, what type of speak people you want to speak with. Otherwise you're going for the event planner. That's going to take you down a path that you don't get into. I call filling a, I call it filling a gap. Um, everybody has something specifically they like, like yours is magic. You have to be willing to be innovative and then find a gap and fill it. So I do my own interview series. And part of why I started doing that was there was a gap that I had seen that I wanted to interview noteworthy, amazing people in Minnesota, 
that weren't just directors or musicians because there's authors, there's business owners, there's some amazing actors and actresses. And I was like, I haven't really seen something like that other than what you get on like the TV station. And so you fill a gap, pick one thing that you love the most, do some research on it and maybe write a list of 10 ways that maybe you could make that possible within a scope of reality. Like what can you from where you're at to really make that happen? Like whether that's via Zoom or phone conferences or um, now Facebook has chat room, like little party room things, have a party room. Maybe you like to do karaoke. Maybe karaoke was the thing that you did. Look into apps that provide karaoke and get that out there and do a big group worth of it. I know I really want that. So somebody, please make a karaoke room happen for me because I'm dying on the inside. That's a gap that needs to get filled like now. Go for so, it. Um, M MA and I will be your audience. Yeah. We'll stand by. Okay. Go. I, I one do, and a two. I'm not doing this. Like, Acapella so, karaoke. No. no. <laughs> Oh, oh, ooh, no, thank you. <laughs> no, nope. Kim and I have done have actually done karaoke together. So I've never done yeah, it. Yeah. I'm oh, shy. see, this is why there's a gap, and we need to fill it. It has to get filled. So <laughs> there you go. I'll fill the karaoke gap with Brad. <laughs> there's your magic Brad's karaoke. That's got a good ring to it. Just say it. Yeah, there you go. I can start a little karaoke yeah. bar, huh? Well, you could call it a stay-at-home karaoke bar. Bring your own beverages. It's perfect. See? A little innovation and a little creativity and finding that gap, and you'll come up with some crazy ideas. Well, be careful, because I'm an implementer. <laughs> <laughs> I'm an interrogator. I'm an instigator. You this, and you'll see um, me on my little... There's four main things that... Um, so where I work is a, an affiliate for a bigger national mental health America. And there's four things that um, kind of build that resiliency, connecting with others. So like the ideas that you can bounce from people. So if you have a friend who's in the same business, talk to each other, come up with some ideas. Self care, you're not going to do a really good job if you're not in a good place with yourself, like get the right amount of sleep, make sure you have a daily schedule. Um, healthy thinking, try to stay positive, try to spin the perspective. You're healthy, you, you have food, you have clean water. Some people don't have any of that. Um, and give your life some meaning by filling those gaps and trying to find ways to get back into your industry in creative new ways gives you meaning to waking up every day. And so those are the four big things that that are really the best way to kind of help reduce that anxiety, keep it lower, build that resiliency and get back into an industry that's completely like toppled over. Yeah, another word for I think uh, that would be purpose. Having a, yep. a purpose because, yep. uh, you know, if you're stressed out and you're thinking, I got to pay bills, I got to pay bills, I got to pay bills. And you're wondering what to do. If you have a purpose, you'll start doing it. And then it's kind of like, right. again, uh, you do what you love and the money will follow kind of thing. Then you'll pay your right. bills and be happy and less stressed out. <laughs> right give yourself that goal like okay so I have a bill to pay what can I do to pay that bill like MA had a super good example when we were talking on the phone um my phone might die during oh. our interview and I'm sorry I only have like one percent battery left well we can we um, can uh, sort of tighten this up and we do so we don't <laughs> lose you and that'd be um, awkward so we can my my biggest takeaway I think is um, anxiety is happening to everybody right now. And it's really the fear and the worry of not knowing because we don't know what's gonna happen. We don't know what's gonna happen when everything opens back up. We don't know much about what's going on, to be perfectly honest. Um, it's that fear of the unknown and really thinking outside that box, but finding that door first. Like you said, the fishbowl door. If a fishbowl door <laughs> was there, we'd have a problem, but figuratively <laughs> speaking, it's perfect. Exactly. Well, well, we don't want your phone to die on us, so I'm going to stop the recording on this, and then I'll beam it up to the universe and let the, let the world find it. Perfect. So how do we get a hold of you in case I want to get a hold of you? You, you have a... An MA's got my phone number, so you can just uh, 
Is your get agent? a hold of me. Uh, to get a hold of me, what I can do is I can send MA my email address, but it's Samantha H at mentalhealthmn.org. And that is probably the best way to get a hold of me. So, yeah. Or just contact Emmy because she's now your agent. <laughs> well, there you go. Now you have a second job. You're welcome. Fourth job. There we job go. Job. You got another job. Yeah. More stress. Well, yeah. I, I, don't, I lost count. <laughs> yeah. Well, ladies, I appreciate you taking the time today beyond Synergy Cafe. And I'm going to sign this yeah. off before our batteries die because we don't want that. And then perhaps we'll do it again sometime soon, okay? Yeah, I would love that. That would be great. Careful. Keep us posted on any new developments. Peace, love, and happiness. This is Magic Bread signing off. <laughs>